Hi, it's Nicola and welcome to Forever Young Autobiographies. Today we're talking about proofreading tips, how to revise and edit your own work. Stay tuned if you're writing your own autobiography, memoir, biography or life story project, I've got some free, a free training for you today to help you get started. If you haven't come across Forever Young Autobiographies before, Welcome, it's where we learn to write life stories for family and friends so that unique memories can live on. I'd love for you to follow, like and subscribe the show. Now when I was in school I was a terrible speller, got everything wrong, had a sea of red crosses. But after years of working as a daily newspaper sub-editor, I've come across pretty well I think the most common um, problems that people have with their writing and I'm going to tell you today that there are some really easy fixes for these common problems. So I've got five um, areas that we're going to focus on today and the first one is spelling and grammar. Now I'm going to say from the outset if you're writing for family and friends you have an audience or readership that's on your side so don't beat yourself up too much about being you know a best-selling expert publisher, you know, it's not going to have this enormously high standard. You know, it's okay, you're human, just do the best that you can. But there are some things that you can do on your own to help make sure that your writing is clear and enjoyable for your readers. That's, that's what we want. We want them to just keep reading, whoever they are. Now, of course, number one would be have a good spell checker and make sure it is set to your language. So in my, for my, uh, here in, a country, in Australia, I've got to set it to Australian English. And you know, if you're in the US, make sure it's US or British English, etc. Makes a world of difference. And of course, remember that spell check doesn't always check your word usage. So if you've got the wrong there or there, you know, it's not gonna pick it up. So it's, a cat, it's not a catch all, but it'll, it'll catch a lot. So make sure you've got your spell checker turned on. Also, have a clear mind when you come to revise and proof your work. Don't try and do it while you're writing. That's a, that is a common trap, people. Try and do the writing and the sub-editing or proofing at the same time. It's too complicated. Give yourself a break and do, do the writing, have a break, then do the editing. Now, to find the errors, you can read it aloud to yourself or you can, you can read it aloud to someone else or they can read it back to you. That is a really good, a, a really good tip is to, for spotting spelling and grammar errors. And one of my favourites is to read it on the screen or print it out and have the font real extra big. <laughs> it sounds a bit scary but yeah, you can see the errors so much more clearly if you have it quite big, they just sort of pop out at you. So that's um, number one, spelling and grammar. Now number two is tenses. Now a lot of people get scared about tenses but basically there's three types. We have the past, the present and the future. And when we're writing an autobiography these things have happened. So we are writing in, in past tense but there are exceptions. Your title, you know, if you've got photo captions and if you've got an introduction or an epilogue. These will be in present tense. Basically, all you do when you're proofreading is you want to make sure the actual copy, the manuscripts in past tense and you just make sure that you're, you've got it all the way through your sentence. A lot of people will start in one tense and finish in another. So keep that in mind. That's point number two. Point number three is names. Now, a lot of people don't think this is a big deal. It's a big deal. You need to get names correct. It will erode your... Um, you're standing with your readers if you get basic things like this wrong. Now mostly I'm talking about people's names. It's so easy to check. Number one, just ask them exactly how do you spell your name. Nothing wrong with that. If you can't ask them, ask a family member who you know will know. You can also look at documents, historical records, um, you know, make sure you get the exact spelling from, the, from a couple of sources if you can. And go online. There's so many things online these days. So that's a great place to double check or confirm names. And also names for places and um, you know events. You can cross check with online as well. 
But of course, make sure you're using a reliable website when you're you know, basing your facts. So keep that in mind. Now, point number four is figures and um, uh, capitals. Now, this is a really common trap for people. They, they sort of start one way, forget how they've started and end another way. We want consistency through our whole manuscript. So just, it's not particularly, um, you know, it's not, it's not a heinous crime to get this wrong, but just pick, pick one way and do it that way. I like to do spelling out numbers from one to nine, and then I switch to the figures. So numeral 10 and above. And you put the comma, I, I like to put the comma when it's 10,000, a number 10,000 and above. So that's a good general rule for using numbers. Now capitals, people love capitals. They think if they put a capital at the start of every word, if it's a name or an event, you know, it's really important. But keep it for proper actual names. So again, you can cross check to make sure it's an actual name on, on documents, online, ask someone. And if it's an acronym, spell it out in full the first time you put it in print. And then from subsequent references, you can just use the acronym. Now give your reader some credit, they'll get it. They're, they're smart. So that's um, figures and capitals. Now the, the fifth tip I have for you today is to check your captions. Captions are a, they're pretty well, I think one of the top ways people get into your book. So they might look at the cover photo, skip to the middle where the photos are, and they get intrigued and then they start reading. So you wanna make sure you have great captions. Now, when you're writing a caption, you, again, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you want them to be in um, present tense because you're looking at a captured event as it's happening. And a great caption will answer some questions, the five W's and the H. So this is um, journalistic speak, but basically, you are answering these questions. The who, what, when, where, why, and how. So captions are great also for adding extra little bits of tidbits of information that you didn't make the cut in the manuscript, but it's a great place to um, sneak them in. So keep that in mind, captions. So there's five easy tips to help you uh, clean up your writing. So I'll just recap for you, we talked about spelling and grammar, we talked about tenses, we talked about names, figures and capitals, and finally we rounded it out with captions. Now I hope this gives you some real clarity to go forward with your revising and editing and save you the cringing <laughs> of seeing errors in print. You know, give yourself some grace, we are only human, we want to do a really good job, but we, it is almost impossible to make sure that your manuscript has no errors. Teeny tiny ones to, to squeeze in there. So give yourself a bit, of, a bit of grace. It's okay. I'm giving you permission. If you'd like to know more about all that I've talked about, head over to my website, foreveryoungautobiographies.com forward slash proofread. I have a whole lot more over there, which goes into a lot more depth. And while you're there, leave a comment. I'd love to know what's your proofreading trip, tips. Have I overlooked something? Have you found errors in my copy? Got to let me know. Please leave me a comment um, and we can share those tips. At the Earlier, I mentioned that free giveaway, which is the Structure Success Training video. Uh, you can sign up for that at, over at the website um, or I'll leave a link for you. It's Forever Young Autobiographies dot com structure success sign up and in this video I sort of sit you down and we really focus on the key memories that you want to include in your book and we nut out a bit of a roadmap a bit of a basic chapter structure so please sign up for that it's completely free now I'd love for you to follow subscribe and like the show and tune in again soon because I'll be back with a new topic. So until then, happy writing.